2015 general election is around the corner. It is your right not only to vote, but to vote for the right candidates. Hello and welcome to another edition of The Eagle. My name is Aisha Gambari. Thank you for joining us. FCC will get you anywhere, anytime. Former military president Ibrahim Badamasi Baba Ngeda says the EFCC under the leadership of Ibrahim Lamorte is living up to expectation. The retired general disclosed this recently in an exclusive interview with the Eagle team. Also to come, two clergymen, Pastor Glory Okegene Aberefa and Reverend Vincent Okogu, have been sentenced to seven years imprisonment for deceiving unsuspecting members of the public into investing in one Mustard Seed Micro Investment Limited, a wonder bank, and defrauded them of their hard earned money. We will also bring to you a report on the trial of SI Angabar and six others who are currently being prosecuted by the EFCC for their complicity in the police pension scam. Please stay tuned as the program continues right after the break. Don't go away. Cheers, cheers. <laughs> cheers. What is it? Please, keep to yourself. Chivurabo, I got your telephone call. Anytime I close my eyes, yes. I see dead people chasing me in my sleep. My Juva Magada. Is it possible for someone to become restless just because of his past? Nevertheless, unless you kill somebody dead, then the spirit will be haunted you. Ha! Was you owe contractors? I embezzled all the money for the roads that are now death traps, killing people every day. I approved the supplies of fake drugs on pipe on water. I embezzled the money at the fear chief. You are supposed to force the avenue. A special man that you don't do of EMCC. I chose people who are doing with Muru to stop other people with Muru. EMCC, as soon as they capture them, threat to prison. Jail. 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 Ah! Are you there? Life are not just about acquire wealth. Making money. When other people are going to die of hunger and neglect. Be careful. EMCC, I watch. EFCC will get you anywhere, anytime. Welcome back. First on our report outlined today is a story on the conviction and sentencing of the duo of Pastor Glory Okegene and Reverend Vincent Okogu to seven years imprisonment each for stealing depositors' funds amounting to 32 million naira. Thelma Eke completes the report. By now, the name Pastor Glory Okogene is no longer strange when the issue of Wonder Bank fraud is being discussed. The clergy who deceived his church followers into investing in his bait company, Mustard C Micro Investment Limited, conspired with one Reverend Vincent Opogu, another member of his church, and stole over 37 million naira from church members and other believers of his get rich sermons through a dubious investment scheme. The accused persons were said to have collected over 1 billion naira from different individuals and organizations as deposits in an illegal banking practice. They have also failed to account for all the deposits they collected. Following a petition to the EFCC filed by some of the depositors detailing the dubious activities of the accused persons, the commission swung into action. Investigations were carried out about the activities of the illegal bank which led to the arrest of the two clergymen in March 2011. They were immediately arraigned before Justice Ibrahim Buba of the Federal High Court, Asaba, Delta State, on a five-count charge bordering on conspiracy and stealing contrary to Section 516 of the Criminal Code Cap 42, Volume 1, and Section 390, Subsection 8B of the Criminal Code Cap 21, Volume 1, Laws of the Delta State of Nigeria, 2006. 
They were also accused to have engaged in banking practice sometimes between 2006 and 2007 at Worry Delta State without the required banking license and thereby committed an offense contrary to Section 2, Subsection 2 of the Banks and Other Financial Institutions Act, Cap B3, Volume 2, Laws of the Federation of Nigeria, 2004. After the arraignment, a full trial began in June 2011, which lasted till January 2012, when the two men of God were sentenced to 10 years imprisonment each by Justice Buba. The judge found Pastor Glory and Reverend Okogo, including their company Mustard Seed Micro Investment Limited, guilty on a four-count charge of carrying out banking practice without license. The illegal bank, Mustard Sea Micro Investment Limited, was convicted on two counts and fined two million naira on each of the counts. The accused persons, both directors of Mustard Sea Micro Investment Limited, were also equally fined two million naira on each of the counts. The terms are to run concurrently. While serving their jail terms, the commission continued with the prosecution of other charges bordering on conspiracy and stealing. They were arraigned on nine count charges before Justice F.O. Owoho of Delta State High Court Worry. After their arraignment, trial began and the accused persons were again found guilty as charged. On December 10, 2014, Justice Ohoho convicted and sentenced them to seven years imprisonment each for stealing depositors' funds amounting to 32 million naira. Delivering the judgment, Justice Ohoa convicted the accused persons on all of the nine count charges preferred against them by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. They were sentenced to seven years imprisonment on each count. The sentence will, however, run concurrently. According to the judge, the convicts will serve the seven year term at Okere Prisons in Worry, Delta State. After completing the 10 year sentence, they are currently serving for illegal banking. Commenting on the verdict, prosecuting counsel Mr. G. K. Latona said the convicts are still answering to other charges at Otoude High Court for related offenses. Today's judgment was delivered in respect of um, the stealing counts in relation to the case of Federal Republic of Nigeria versus Mustard Seed Micro Investment, Pastor Glory Abifera and Reverend Vincent Okogo. A uh, judgment had previously been delivered on January 7, 2013 in respect of the carrying on of illegal banking business. And that was ever the first time in the history of Nigeria that we had a successful prosecution of a case of carrying on illegal banking business. So today's judgment is in respect of stealing of the depositors fund, those who deposited money in relation to the legal banking business. Some of the victims whose funds were recovered also spoke with the Eagle team. I feel elated, I feel happy that I was not uh, skimmed out of uh, my retirement money. Fregane Patrick Bamigo is also one of the victims. He invested the sum of over 12 million naira into the proposed company. CCC, they've done a very marvelous job, which I never expected. And I pray that you will continue to progress in whatever they are doing. Thelma A.K. reporting for The Eagle. You are still watching the program, The Eagle. Still on court cases, the draw of Gabriel Osare Mesavi, also known as Collins Page and Aikatsume Best Jr. Cyril, are currently being prosecuted before Justice E.F. Ikonwe of the Edo State High Court, sitting in Benin City, Edo State, for offenses bordering on advanced fee fraud and romance scam. Kamilo Gebi has more. Gabriel Osare Mesavi, also known as Collins Page, and Best Junior Cyril were alleged to have fleeced a 49-year-old Belgian nurse, Gloriska Janina, whom they met on Facebook of the sum of about 60,000 euros. While Xavi was slammed with a 12-count charge, Junior Cyril was docked on a 6-count charge. They, however, pleaded not guilty to the charges. The victim, sometime in January 2014, allegedly met one of the accused persons on Facebook who introduced himself as Collins Page a Croatian engineer resident in Wigan, England. Within days of their meeting, Page contacted her with the story that he was in Nigeria to supervise a construction project in Edo State and that he was having difficulty with his credit card as it had been blocked for security reasons. 
He solicited Janina's assistance for desperate cash. Over a period of weeks, Janina kept sending him money until she had transferred a total of over 60,000 euros through one Emmanuel Oko based in Cape Town, South Africa. When the pressure to send more money became unbearable for Janina, she confided in a friend who told her that she might have fallen into the hands of scammers. Janina consequently contacted the embassy of Belgium in Nigeria, who reported to the EFCC. Still on reports, Justice Oluwatoyin Ikpaye of a Lagos High Court sitting in Ikeja has convicted and sentenced the trio of James Etete, Ekene Jude, and Abidemi Adesanya to two and a half years imprisonment each for stealing the sum of 480,000 naira belonging to a new generation bank. The convicts were first arraigned in May 2014 on a six-count charge bordering on conspiracy to commit felony, forgery, and use of false documents. Justice Ikbae found them guilty on all the counts and convicted them accordingly. The sentence is to run from the day of arraignment. Trouble came for the convicts when the management of the bank petitioned the EFCC over their fraudulent activities. They were operating as a syndicate of fraudsters who specialized in stealing bankers' identity to enable them effect fraudulent wire transfers from unsuspecting and well-funded customers' accounts. They contacted some staff of the bank to join the syndicate. However, the staff members informed the bank and were asked to play along. They were later arrested by operatives of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. Also convicted and sentenced to four years imprisonment by Justice A. Onyetanu of the Federal High Court, Port Harcourt, River State, is one Godfrey Obioha. Obioha was convicted and sentenced without an option of fine. The convict was found guilty on a two-count charge bordering on illegal dealing in petroleum products without appropriate license preferred against him by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. Obioha's ordeal started in 2008 when he was arrested by the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps with 30 liters of substances suspected to be automotive gas oil, AGO, without license. He was handed over to the EFCC for further investigation and possible prosecution. Welcome back once again. Next is the report on the ongoing trial of Esaid Angabar and six others who are currently being prosecuted by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission EFCC for their complicity in the police pension scam. Golden Agu has more. The accused Esai Dangaba, Atiku Abubaka Kigo, Ahmed Inuwa Wada, Mrs. Veronica Oloma Onyebula, Sani Habila Zira, Uzoma Sirio Atang, and Christian Madbueke, who were alleged to have defrauded the police pension office to the tune of 24 billion naira, were first arraigned before Justice Husseini Bala Yusuf of the High Court of the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja, on April 10, 2013 on a 20-count amended charge that borders on criminal breach of trust. The offense is contrary to Section 315 of the Penal Code Act, Cap 532 Laws of the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja. At the resumed hearing of the case, the court admitted as exhibit a letter titled Reinvestigation Activities dated January 6, 2014, which the prosecution tendered as evidence. It will be recalled that the defense led by Adeboyega Awumolo son at the last adjourned date contested the admissibility of the document saying the author of the document is an interested party in the case however 
counsel to EFCC, Rotimi Jacobs, son, argued that the document is admissible as a person tendering it has no personal or pecuniary interest in the case. Justice Yusuf, while ruling on the matter, held that the document does not violate the Evidence Act. He consequently admitted it as exhibit. The case has been adjourned to February 10 and 20, 2015 for continuation of trial. Golden Ago reporting for the Eagle. And from that report, we move to our special focus segment on today's edition of the segment. General Ibrahim Badamasi Babangida, also known as IBB, is a retired Nigerian Army officer who was Nigeria's military president from 1985 to 1993. The former president, in an exclusive interview with members of the Eagle team led by Wilson Uwujaren, said, for the country to completely eradicate corruption, all ends must be on deck. Kamila Gabi, once again. Former military president, General Ibrahim Badamasi Babangida, may go down in the history of Nigeria as the most loved, yet most hated leader to ever rule Africa's most populous nation. Such paradox marks him out as an intriguing personality who remains a reference point in the political circle more than two decades after he stepped aside from Asorok in controversial circumstances. IBB, as he is fondly called, said at 73, his life has been very fulfilling and rewarding. Seriously speaking, um, we came, my generation came at a time when Nigeria was just trying to be on his feet. Um, I went into the military service in 1962. Nigeria was just about two years old. And it had the problems of um, a developing nation, what they need to go through and so on. And so we were witnesses to these developments. And I think one should be able to quantify his contributions based on that period, what we have been doing. And I think uh, it was very fulfilling and it was very rewarding. Why did you choose to go into the Nigerian military at that time? There was a drive to get students or people from this part of the country so as to balance the officer corps of the armed forces. So there was a deliberate drive to recruit officers from this part of the country. And uh, I was fortunate that the minister for the army happened to be from this part of the country. So he, one of his first recruitment drive was to go to our school, and uh, he did. He talked to us, gave us why we should go into the military, and then we saw some demonstrations by General Yakub Gawan. He was a captain at that time. And so a lot of us got excited about it. We applied for it and uh, we got through the exams, the interviews, and we were recruited. If not the military, where else would you have been? My original thought was to be an engineer. Civil? Yeah. Mechanical? No, civil. And when this military thing came out, I jettisoned that and uh, went in for the military. When asked how the EFCC is faring, the former president said the EFCC under the leadership of Ibrahim Lamorde is achieving good results. I think they have done remarkably well um, because they came in at a time when this country definitely was needing an organization that should check the scourge of this corruption and the rest of it. I like the idea of the law that came into being to check the whole process of uh, corruption, economic 
and so on. And I think it came at the right time. Uh, I took quite a number of interests also to know how they operate. And uh, especially under the present leadership, I took more interest in that. And uh, I believe they are achieving good results. I was reading in the media some of the uh, prosecutions that went on. But above all, I think I'm impressed also that they have been doing everything in accordance with the law. Despite all the efforts, Nigeria continues to be ranked as one of the most corrupt countries. What will you say is responsible for the high level of corruption in the country? The fact that you even accepted uh, the fact that corruption index says Nigeria is highly corrupt, I think that's subjective, quite frankly. Uh, a lot of us have had a lot of experience in other countries. Generally, uh, virtually everybody, every country, that is the problem of corruption in various forces. Uh, I think what we need to do is to do the little we did when we were in office. Try to find out the source of corruption and then block it. You're not harming anybody. If I knew then let's say in, back in 1996, that commodity board, as we used them, as we knew them then, uh, was an institution that has a lot of corrupt practices in there. An ordinary farmer brings his products. The board is there to assess it. Either number one, or well, grade one, grade two, grade three. A lot of things went wrong. So what we did was to say, okay, maybe you encourage the farmer to go to the end users, negotiate. The end user also will inspect what you have. So the farmer is talking to you directly. No middleman in between. Because the corruption starts where the middleman is. Uh, maybe the farmer has to bribe you to grade his uh, products as good and so on. So if you have identified those areas, what you do is to eliminate those things that are responsible and educate the ordinary man. The military regimes before you had programs that frontally tackled corruption. Will you see your government fought corruption? We, we had different approaches. Um, I think my government or our government at that time uh, have been able to identify those areas and checked them. Maybe you are too young, um, but if you remember in this country, there are things you call essential commodities. Again, these are all sources of corruption. You go and buy more food or whatever it is. And we got government to take its hands off agricultural production. Let people use their own brain, their own hands, their own labor. Nobody has to do it for them. So we did, but I was I am proud to say that was much, much more effective. I sit down now. I don't know, I don't have the facts, but if what I read in the paper is what is currently happening, then I think we are angels. 
During the Buhari Diagbon's administration, there was war against indiscipline. Your administration didn't have a program like that to tackle corruption. Why didn't you put up something similar to deal with corruption? Because I, I was learning from the mistakes of those before me. If you take, for example, the war against indiscipline, they are teaching you how to cue. They are teaching you how to say sorry if you match something. It hasn't solved anything. They're trying to make you be civil, right, in your approach to all things. Okay, I accept it, I'm going to queue before I get into a car. But I might have bribed somebody before I got, say, a ticket to go into the vehicle and so on. So we keep on learning from the mistakes and we try not to fall into the same trap. Therefore, we devised going to the source and make amends, make corrections in those places. An interesting interview, I must say. That's how far we can bring you on that interview. We will be bringing you the concluding part next week, God willing. And with that, we we'll wrap it up on today's edition of the program. To be part of this program, please send your contributions to info at efccnigeria.org or search for us on Google Plus at official efcc or official efcc at gmail.com. You can also like our page on facebook.com forward slash official efcc or follow us on Twitter at official efcc. To watch our programs and other activities, please log on to youtube.com forward slash official efcc. My name is Aisha Gamperi. Thank you for watching and God bless Nigeria.